Clydebank, in fact, Glasgow, in fact, the whole of Clydeside had, had prepared itself uh, well for, you know, an expected attack. But what was so unexpected was was the fact that you just concentrated in a small area, and the small area that they concentrated on was the town of Clydebank. Over the course of two nights, over 400 bombs were dropped in an area which was barely two square miles. But most of the damage was caused by incendiaries, which were small bombs. They were about, oh, yay long, they were about two inches in diameter, they were filled with thermite. Uh, they were packed in such a way that when they fell from the bombers they would spin, they would spread and 200,000 bombs it is estimated, one kilograms bombs, fire bombs fell on Clydebank on the 13th of March and if you look at the bomb map of the bombing of Clydebank you will see a massive intensity of bombs at the beginning where these oil tanks were across the top of the town and as it goes further up the Clyde into Glasgow it becomes less and less and more in a city bombing pattern. As, as an artist, you sense things. Uh, I know that sounds kind of pretentious, but you know sometimes you make some of your biggest decisions in life by instinct. And this was a, early 1980. I thought a lot of the the, the Blitz generation were, were aging; they, they, they would soon be gone. And and I wanted not to to deal with with the mechanics of uh, you know the, the the blitzing. The the history had been written. Um, Everything had been documented to, to, to a great degree. I wanted to actually just go and ask very ordinary people, just ordinary citizens of Claybank, tell me your story. The exhibition will not be about the artist's view of the world. It'll be about you view of the world. I'll be the conduit. I'll take your story and I'll deal with the raw, brutal emotions of what you felt and I'll put that in the images, which is a daunting task but in a strange way that it worked because you, the encouragement I got for these people was extraordinary because they wanted to tell their stories. It was time to tell their stories. It took me about four or five years to put it all together. And it was, it was actually quite a harrowing thing to do, but very cathartic for the people who were involved in it. It was quite amazing. They just they accepted it and they took ownership. We're, we're looking at abstraction here. We're looking at art, at the, the heavier end of the viewing spectrum. And, and you would get into the gallery and they would be having conversations and say, that's my painting, you know, and would claim it. That is mine. Mm -hmm.